So this year, I want to talk about the viewing patterns. And uh, very quickly, I, I give you a copy of the summary, which is the abstract. In the, the abstract in the past tense is the summary. Basically, the focus is on viewing times, 2016, 2017. And what I found was that there's a shift towards mobile phone viewing. There's more mobile phones now. People understand the technology. A relative shift towards mobile phone viewing. The more disturbing thing is that there's a decline in the viewing times. They're viewing for shorter periods of time. So there's a shift towards mobile phone viewing, which means a small screen, and there's a shorter amount of viewing. I have to process what that means if I'm going to continue to do this kind of thing, use the modern technology. If they want to watch for a shorter period of time and watch on a smaller screen, I have to change what I do. I would prefer that they stay with a computer, and now the computer screens are big like this, and read it and listen to it. I always find that if I'm practicing a lecture and I go into the room and look, put it on the big screen. My brain processes it better than when I'm looking at a small screen. So it's surprising to me that they would want to do that. But I think it's convenience. They have their cell phones with them all the time. So it's just easy to get to it. They open the Moodle on their phone, they click on it, even during a test. Suffice it to say that they are comfortable with these small devices, which I have not yet developed a competence with. Just to brief you on how the data looked over the past several years. So these are the last two years, I think, maybe three years. There are four models here in one class we teach called economic development. The Lewis model, the harris Dovar model, the harris Todaro model, and the ISLM model. Two of them are in chapter three of the textbook, and the others are at the end of my course because of the way I organize my course. So it shouldn't be surprising that there's more views on the ones that come earlier in the course, if it were actually my students, and fewer views at the end of the semester because they don't care as much. That, so that's a quick look at what the data look like in terms of views. I was at a conference in London in summer of 2005, and I had a very bad internet connection, so I couldn't get my content uploaded. Many people were recording what was going on. So when I came back to the US, like a month later, I uploaded it, so you don't see the YouTube effect, sorry, the Facebook effect, because I got there too late. Other people had already gotten all the views, etc. But let's get back to the paper. Table one, for the four academic models I showed you, you can see here that the shift is towards more mobile phone viewing. So you'll see the percentages in purple are the positive, and that says the percentage of mobile phone views increase. For example, for the Lewis model, there's an 11% increase in mobile phone viewing, 2017 versus 2016. And if it comes at the expense of those who are watching it on computers, you can see there's a 10% decline in those who are watching on computers. And across these four videos, you see pretty much the same pattern. Younger cohorts, even one year after another, are switching towards this alternative. I call it alternative. I think a computer is still a better way to learn than a mobile phone, but that's what's happening. So here I have the data. Let's see. Here I have by viewing times, which is the point of the presentation. And it says the viewing times decrease. So I use red to show that the number is going down. And you'll see pretty much uh, across both platforms, computer and mobile phone, the length of viewing time is going down. So this is just focused on the lowest model. Here broken out by region of the world, yes. How, how long is the, is the original video? Uh, so I have that information right here. This one is 15 minutes, 41 seconds. And they're watching one third of it, 20% of it. I'm not sure what they're finding. How they, you know, <laughs> speed learning. And now on YouTube, you can hit, hit double speed. I'm not sure that's good. You can slow it down or speed it up, but anyway. That's what the data are showing. So you'll see again, the viewing times are decreasing across the world. Asia, North America, Europe. There was one anomaly here on mobile phone, but I'm not sure what's going on there. Generally, the last column is all devices. By all devices, I mean all devices, not just these two. So the overall body of data. Then YouTube will let me break it up by device. You wouldn't see tablets show up. Tablets have a tiny percentage of views in this academic content. Maybe there are newer devices. The phone is convenient. The computer is their traditional way, hopefully, of looking at the stuff. So anyway, that's what the data on the viewing times looks like by region of the world. This is the second model. Again, you see pretty much the same idea. Look at the last column for all devices, and look at the first. Computer times are going down. Mobile phone also going down. Sometimes there's an anomaly in the data. One of the things that YouTube does is if you stop watching a video, when you come back, it will pick up where you left off, and it'll count it as one view. I notice it for my own content. It always picks up where it stopped last time. And there's a red bar telling me what percentage of the video I viewed. 
And if it's all red, it means I've gotten to the end, and then it will start over. But anyway, the main point I'm trying to make here is that shorter viewing times. Two data points do not give a trend, but I suspect that there is a trend here. Shorter viewing times, obviously, if you keep going, you're going to watch it for zero seconds. If, but if somebody watch it for two minutes and come back and watch the remainder, is that it's one. I think it's kind of it's one view. I think so, but I'm not but sure. So if you watch two minutes and then the remaining four minutes, would that four minutes be counted in the data? I can't. I don't know the algorithms that YouTube is using, but I would say that very rarely would people do that. We're talking about 30,000 views. I'm not thinking it's people watching over and over. Most people, it's like the taste of Detroit. You sample and you move on. And then there are 10 other videos on the same topic, so why would you come into that one? You're more likely to say, give it a like or dislike and move on. And if you've, the test is passed, you're not coming back. So most students will only watch a video once. Took the test, never come back to that video. In fact, what I've observed is that there are fewer views of a video, for example, the harris Studaro model is viewed in the first half of the semester, and it's not viewed in the second half of the semester. Because if you had a midterm, and it showed up on the midterm, and you don't have a comprehensive exam, you, or even if you do have a comprehensive exam, if you aced it the first time, you're not going to rewatch a video when you already kind of have learned it. So the people who are watching it later in the game, well, their exams were probably comprehensive, and they didn't have a midterm. So, so there's a lot more going on in the data that I can process. But I thought the viewing times decline is a nice thing. But the two minutes is also something that is bothersome to me. How much can you learn from two minutes of a video? Clearly, there are people who click on it and move away. So an average is always, I tell my students, averages are like swearing. Economics does not do average because average is not an indicator of anything. Some people will stay two seconds, others will stay 16 minutes. So the average doesn't follow up. Yes. Well, I'm wondering, uh, these times are averages? The average time? Yes. My guess would be that a certain percentage watches the entire video, mm -hmm. and then a lot of people get four seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, right. And that's when we have a two minute average. Average, yes. <laughs> I, I'm sure it is. But even when the video is six okay. minutes, or, thir or three minutes, or 15 minutes, it seems that there's cognitive <laughs> <laughs> Low in two minutes is like, okay, I've had enough of this. I kind of get the sense of what's going on. So anyway, those are the four academic videos. And you see the same pattern. Here, the general trend is still that there's shorter viewing times. And I don't expect that one video will have longer viewing times and those will have shorter viewing times. If the new generation or the newer technologies... Watching the video on a phone is not ideal. If it's a social video with jokes and cats may be fine. If it's academic, you probably need a bigger screen and a quiet room and you need to process what's going on. So anyway, this is interesting to me. Uh, the table number one is here. You have that. So on the non-academic content, I look to see if I see the same pattern. So like I see in my academic content, there's this decline in viewing times. Do I see the same thing in my non-academic videos? And uh, it's a mixed bag, but I would generally say it looks as though people are watching videos for a shorter period of time. Because there's always so much new content. The amount of videos that get uploaded to YouTube every single day is mind-boggling. So the supply is increasing, and the population is not going that fast. So, okay, there's more food to taste. Let's just get a small sample and move on. I'm not trying to make any real point with the non-academic video content is mainly interest in how students are using newer technologies to enhance their studying, but I thought I would throw in the non-academic to see if I saw the same pattern. And this, this video actually was some ladies dancing, and it's mainly watched by young women. YouTube will tell me the demographic. If you use your phone and it knows your age and your gender, so when I look at the profile, it says mainly young women, 18 to 25, are the ones watching this video. The economic content is mainly watched by males. 67% of the time it's a male watching it, according to the data that YouTube shows the content owner. And this was the opening of the conference. Not a lot there, but again, you see that red, and that red says that there's a decline in viewing time. And certainly on the mobile phone, there's a decline in viewing times. As I reflect on this, I ask the question, how does the content creator move forward? If you're creating new content and you have this sense that People want you to stand up, speak up, and shut up. What do you say? How do you say it? 
how do you get them to engage beyond that average of a couple of minutes? How do you tell the individual, this is actually important? And even though you want to click on it and move away and watch the other video on the side, perhaps you need to stay with it. I would love to find a way to make sure that the viewers are not distracted by the 10 other videos on the side. And that's why I used to embed it into the Moodle page where all you could see was what I gave you and you couldn't get distracted by YouTube. In my classroom, I don't allow any technology. You need permission to turn on your computer, your calculator. Well, not really, but I'd say that the first day of class. You need to get permission to turn on your calculator because I don't, I am very annoyed when students look down in their lap. <laughs> we never did that when I was growing up. We didn't look in our lap. So why are you looking in your lap? Well, that's what we do. No, I want to see both your hands and I want to see that you're looking at me. I'm not that cute. You can't compete with Facebook. So you close your laptop and let's talk about the content. I also tell them to watch the video before they come to class and they race through it in two seconds. And it's a challenge. And I'm so glad that I'm close to retirement. I don't have to deal with this much longer. Six more years and I'm done. Thank you.